What we've been doing for hypothesis testing is known as the traditional method. And there is a second method known as the p-value method that we'll look at here. Which one of these two methods that you do is completely up to you and your own personal preference, but it is two different ways to do it. For the p-value method, instead of calculating and figuring out what our critical value is, we're going to figure out what's called the p-value. And in general, there's going to be two cases. In general, if our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then we're going to reject our null hypothesis. And if it's greater than or equal to alpha, we don't reject our null hypothesis. You'll notice both of these contain the equal to case. Essentially, if the p-value is exactly alpha, we run into some problems. So we really try to avoid that situation. This time, whenever we try to do these hypothesis tests, we start the same. We're going to st state our hypotheses. We're going to compute our test value just like we did before. And then we're going to find the p-value rather, rather than the critical value. We then make the decision and summarize the result. And the best way to show you how to find the p-value is to just dive right into some examples. So let's do a few examples. Let's suppose that you read that the average cost for tuition at a four-year public college is greater than $5,700. You want to test if this is accurate. So you are going to sample a random set of colleges. Let's say you sample 36 colleges and you find that their average is $5,950 and you do some research and find that the population standard deviation is 659. And we want to test this claim at the 0 .05 level. We want to know, is it greater? And we're going to use the p-value method. Our null hypothesis would be that it's equal to 5,700. And our alternative would say that it is greater than. I'm still going to go ahead and draw a picture even though I'm not finding the critical value. So the next step is to find the test value. The test value said x bar minus the mean over standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which gives us approximately 2.28. In order to find the p-value, we still need our z-table. Going to our z-table, we knew our test value was 2.28, and we actually want to find the corresponding area. So we go down to 2.2 and over to 8 to get 0.9887. So we know that 0.9887 corresponds to the area to the left. Since we want a right-tailed, we need to do 1 minus 0.9887, which is 0 0.0113. And this right here is the p-value. In this case, our p-value is less than alpha which tells us that we reject H0. So the article was right. It is actually greater than 5,700. Let's look at one more using the p-value. Let's suppose that we have someone that claims that the average wind speed in a certain city is 8 miles per hour. So they're claiming that mu is 8 miles per hour. We know that the standard deviation is 0 0.06. We're going to look at a sample of 32 days, and we find that the average wind speed is 8.2. We're going to test at alpha equal to 0 0.05, and what we really want to know is, is this researcher right? Is it 8? We don't care if it's above or below. This tells me that my null hypothesis is going to be equal to 8. My alternative is just going to be not equal to 8. 
So we have a two-tailed test. My test value is x bar minus mu over sigma oh, 6 divided by the square root of n. And we can work this out. When we do, we get 0.189. So we need to look up 0.189 in our z table. Looking at our z table, we go down to 1.8 over to 9. And that gets us 0.9706. Just like before, we need to do 1 minus 0.9706. And when we do, we get 0.0294. However, this is not the p-value. So the p-value is a little bit trickier on these two-tailed tests. This is the p-value for one of the tails. Since we have two tails, we actually have to do 2 times 0.0294 to get the appropriate p-value of 0.0588, which is bigger than alpha. That means we don't reject H0. It's probably 8. We can't say definitively that it's 0.8. We don't have enough evidence to actually say that it's not 0.8 or that it's not eight miles per hour, but it probably is.